Hey everyone, Eddie Gray here with thepipenook.com. This is part 24 in my 25 part series of how to smoke a pipe. So we've come a long way, um, but there's a couple more things I'd like to cover before we call it, you know, call it a day, so to speak. Um, in this part, we're going to talk about pipe tobacco storage. And there are a lot of different ways to store your pipe tobacco um, to varying uh, degrees of success and really it depends on how long you intend to store that tobacco um, really that that will dictate the best way to do it so um, first off I would say that this greatly depends on the temperature and the humidity uh, where you live um, I live fairly close to the Gulf Coast in uh, you know Northwest Florida it's very humid here um, so we don't have, I rarely have a problem with my tobacco drying out, I'll tell you that. Um, I think, well, we'll get to that, but, uh, yeah, it, it's not as much of a problem here as maybe it would be in, I don't know, I would guess Arizona or someplace like that, that, um, is as hot, but also is much less humid than here. Um, so, you know, it kind of just depends on where you live. Temperature and climate, humidity especially. But um, Ziploc bags are what I'm going to talk about first. You know, this is bags within bags here. This works all right. Um, I would say that for me, where I'm at, and again, your mileage may vary for all of this, but you know, if I keep a Ziploc bag within a Ziploc bag, like a smaller sandwich size bag within a freezer bag, um, this typically lasts for a month or two, maybe even more. Um, this stuff's already been bagged up like this for a couple of months, and uh, it feels fine. Um, so next up, cracked tins. If you just crack a tin, it kind of depends on the, the type of tin. So let's discuss that. Um, Here's a tin of Dunhill Flake that I've got opened up, and it's been cracked for a while, I would say a few weeks to a month, and it still feels like it, it's fairly moist. Um, keeping open tins like this typically for me only lasts about a month, but this one I've had inside of a Rubbermaid container, so that's the difference there. But yeah, if you're going to crack a tin and smoke it in a month's time, you really don't have to do anything with it, um, at least where I live. It'll be good. It'll be fine in this tin. This type of tin, these right here, um, they take up more space. I think this is only two ounces in here. It's a much bigger uh, container than this, which is almost two ounces. Um, but you know it has these lips kind of like coffee cans these lips do pretty good in my experience for keeping uh, tobacco keeping tobacco nice and moist for extended periods of time um, this tin I know has been open for close to six months now so I would say three to six months in a tin like this where I live is fine on its own now it started to get a little dry at the four month mark for me, a little dry. So I put it in one of these containers. And uh, so let's talk about these Rubbermaid containers or these types of containers. You know, glass or plastic, you know, snap on top containers. These do really well. Um, I use these a pretty good bit for like storing samples or you know, one ounce bulk uh, blends, that kind of thing. This does really well. Um, I would say these are good for about a year in my experience. Um, for sometimes maybe even a year to two years if, you, if you're putting Ziploc bags inside of that kind, kind of container. Could be a year to two years. But probably the most common would be mason jars. And there are several different kinds of mason jars. Oh, first let me talk about these. These are little Walmart containers that I got that are kind of pop-top, you know. Um, 
I used to use a, I used to use these quite a bit because I got these really cheap at Walmart. I can't remember exactly how much they were, and I liked that they were ease of access. I didn't have to unscrew the cap. Um, but I would say these I would recommend for about a year where I live. Really, not much more than that because you you will notice your tobacco start to dry out. Um, just the standard size mason jar right here. I think this is, what is this, a pint size? And then you have the smaller ones right here. I honestly can't remember <laughs> uh, what sizes these are. I think this is a pint and I think this is a half pint, but I'm not sure. Um, these um, I tend to use for flakes because of course this isn't a flake <laughs> but I tend to use this uh, this size for flakes because the flakes will stand up they're about that size um, and you know I can just kinda turn it on its side and pull a flake out rather than this style of mason jar which has kinda the fluted inward sides kinda hard to, to get the flakes out that way um, but all of these screw-on cap mason jars, I would recommend these more than anything else for pipe tobacco storage. I have some, um, like this one, this is kind of a tiny mason jar. I use this for coins and things like that. But this is my deluxe navy rolls that I've had aging in here for four years, since 2013. And they're in great shape. They're still in really good shape after four years. No crinkle, nice and malleable. That flake is almost just right for no, you know, no drying time um, to smoke after four years. So I would say uh, mason jars are probably good for five to ten years of storage. Would be my guess. Um, the oldest stuff that I have currently is four years old that I've personally jarred up, but. Based on what I'm seeing, I would say five to ten years, pretty safe. Um, so, I guess that's about it for pipe tobacco storage. Um, we have one more part and we'll be finished in this series. I won't know what to do with myself <laughs> because it's occupied my time quite a bit this past week. But uh, And then, of course, I have editing to do. But part 25 will be the end. Y'all stay tuned for that and we'll chat with you later.